So welcome to another video of Physics with Cyrus. In this video, I'll be solving A-level physics paper 1-2, right? And this is from May, June 2018, right? The duration of this paper is 1 hour 15 minutes. Uh, so let us begin. In the, in the beginning, you have been provided by this data, right? Which can you can use for your advantage. And you have also a list of formulae, which you can use, okay? Okay, beginning with question number one. So a sheet of gold leaf has a thickness of 0.125 to micrometers. A gold atom has a radius of 174 picometers, right? Approximately how many layers of atoms are there in this sheet? So this question is from the very first uh, topic, physical quantities and base units, right? What you have to understand here is that, that this micro here is representing 10 raised to power minus 6 and pico represents 10 raised to power minus 12 that is the first thing that you should recognize so there's a gold sheet like this right and uh, it has different atoms right gold atoms like this like this the total thickness of that is 0.125 micrometers and the radius of the gold atom is this so what you will do is that you can find the diameter of the gold atom that is this is the diameter this entire is the diameter right and that is going to be 174 times 2 times since you have picometer here so you multiply by 10 raised to the power minus 12 right and then what you can do is that you can apply this formula that is you have the thickness that is 0 0.125 into 10 raised to the power minus 6 over 174 into 2 into 10 raised to the power minus 12. By doing appropriate mathematical calculations, uh, your answer would be approximately equal to 400, around 400, right? So C is the answer for this question. So this is what you'll do, right? Moving on. Question number two, the drag coefficient CD is, number, is a number with no units. Uh, it is used to compare the drag on different cars at different speeds. CD is given by the equation this, 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 where F is the drag force on the car, rho is the density of the air, A is the cross-sectional area of the car, and V is the speed of the car. What is the value of N? So they have provided you the information that the CD has no units, right? But you know the units of force, you know the units of density, you know the units of area, and I'm going to use them in this equation. So what I'm going to do here is that I have, since there are no units of CD, I'll write that as 1, and I'll ignore 2 as well, right? Because it, this is, what, what you do is that you ignore uh, numbers, right? You have F, F is mass into acceleration. So mass is a unit of kilograms. Acceleration is meter per second square, right? And what I can do is I can bring this expression here. That is going to be Vn times density has the units of kilogram per meter cube. And the units of the area are meter square. So I'm going to write here meter square, right? So what I'm going to do here now, I'm going to shift it somewhere here. This is going to be ms minus 1 since velocity is ms minus 1 this is going to be raised to power n you have kilogram here minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1 that is equivalent to kilograms ms minus 2 so what you'll do is you'll cancel this one with this one and what you'll do is you'll write m raised to power n s minus n times m minus 1 and you have m is minus 2. Now this is the mathematical comparison. You can compare the indices here. You have on this side, on the right hand side, and on the left hand side, you have s raised to power minus n here and s raised to power minus 2. So what you can do simply here is that you write minus n is equal to minus 2, and you'll get the answer as n is equal to 2. So b is the answer, right? So this is how you solve such sort of questions. Moving on, this question is about 
a student measures the current through a resistor and the potential difference across it, right? So this is about errors and uncertainties. There is a 4% uncertainty in the current reading and 1% and a 1% uncertainty in the potential difference reading. The student calculates the resistance of the resistor. What is the percentage uncertainty in the calculated resistance? What you're going to do here is that you have been given the uncertainties here. These are the percentage uncertainties, remember that. So the general formula for resistance is R is equal to V over I, right? But in dealing with uncertainties, you can write here delta R over R. That is equal to delta V over V plus delta I over I, right? And since you have percentages, what you can do here is that you write delta R over R times 100 is equal to delta V over V times 100 plus delta I over I times 100, right? Now you can, you can figure this out that this is R percent and this is V percent plus I percent, right? Now the things becomes pretty easy here, right? You have 4% uh, uncertainty in the current reading, right? So you'll write 4 here. And you have 1% uncertainty in the potential difference reading, right? So, so the answer is going to be 5% in total. So the option B is the correct answer for this. I hope this is clear. Moving on. Uh, student applies a potential difference V of... 4.0 plus minus 0.1 volts across a resistor of a resistance R of 10.0 plus minus 0.3 ohms for a time of 50 plus minus 1. So one thing that you should recognize here is that the values such as x plus delta x has this. You see that there is only one decibel place here, so there is only one decibel place here, right? But the significant figures for the uncertainty should be always one, right? So this is one significant figure. This is also one significant figure, right? And the decimal places should also be the same. So let's say if you have a question in which you have 5.00, let's say for example, then you should have the uncertainty written, written like this. You see that they have the same number of decimal places and the uncertainty that is delta x is uh, correct to two, uh, it, it is correct to one significant figure here, right? This is this is one significant figure. So always remember that the uncertainty should be written to one significant figure, and the, the decimal places they are the same as the x, right? Okay, moving on. The student calculates the energy dissipated using the equation below, right? And uh, you have E is equal to V square times T over R. What is the absolute uncertainty in the calculated energy values, right? So remember that what is absolute uncertainty? That is this delta x, right? Remember that that this delta x is known as the absolute uncertainty. Uncertainty. And you have delta x over x, that is what? That is the fractional uncertainty. And for the percentage uncertainty, you have delta x over x times 100. So that is percentage uncertainty in x, right? So now uh, they have asked, what you can do here is that they have given you the value of the energy. What you have to do here is that you have to find the absolute uncertainty. You can write delta E over E is equivalent to 2 times, since when you have a power involved here, you'll write 2 times delta V over V plus delta t over t right whenever there is a power involved you bring it here right that is the general rule if this is n times you'll bring n here right and if the quantities are multiplied you'll add their fractional uncertainties like this and when they're divided even then you'll add the fractional uncertainty now you have uh, the data here you have this you can what you can do is you can put it here 2 times 0 0.1 over 4 plus uh, for uh, delta t we have 1 over 50. You see that this is only one significant figure, right? And there are no decimal places. So 1 over 50 here, then we have uh, 0 0.3, 0 
over 10.08. Now this entire calculation will give you what? That will give you delta E over E, right? That entire calculation that you would have would in fact give you delta E over E, right? When you'll solve it. And when you'll multiply this expression with the value of E, this, this 80 joules, when you'll multiply this with this, the resulting answer would be the absolute uncertainty that is delta E. Once you get this answer right, when you do the calculations, you'll multiply with this value E, and you'll get delta E. So this uh, answer for this uh, comes out to be, uh, that is approximately eight joules, right? So this is what you'll do. So the knowledge of uncertainties is very important uh, in P1, in P2, even in P5 of A2, right? Moving on. So this is uh, a question on kinematics, right? You have been given the velocity of an object changes with time as shown, right? You have been given the velocity time graph. Which graph best shows the variation with time of the displacement S of the object? So remember that when you have displacement time graphs, their gradients will give you the velocity. So if I look closely here, the option A, I have the gradient which is decreasing all the way. And then there's a point it comes to zero. So if I draw a velocity time graph in comparison to this, I would have something like this, right? I have, you see that the gradient is decreasing, so I have, you know, a graph like this, decreasing slope, right? This, this gradient is constant and it is negative, right? And then we have, after that you see that it is in the negative direction, the values are negative, so that is going to be like this, right? So it's going to be like this. So the most appropriate answer would be A, if you compare this with B, C, or D, right? That is going to be absolutely wrong because if, I, if you take the gradient here, it would be a straight line, right? And that is not what we have here. We have a decreasing gradient. And if you even take this, that would also be a straight line, but of lower magnitude, right? And uh, this also does not satisfy the above part here. So A is the answer, which is the right answer. Moving on. A projectile is launched at an angle to the horizontal at time t is equal to zero. It travels over horizontal ground as shown. So you have this projectile. This is the path of the projectile. Assume that air resistance is negligible. You have to assume that air resistance is negligible, right? Which graph best shows the variation with time of the speed of the projectile? Now, look at this, that they're asking you about the speed of the projectile from when it is launched to when it lands on the ground. So remember, remember that, that in a projectile, you have something like this. You see, this is the velocity here. This is the direction of the velocity and Remember that the horizontal velocity always remains the same with no air resistance. That doesn't change. That will always and always remain the same. However, the vertical velocity is going to decrease as it moves upward, right? You see it's decreasing all the way and it, at, the, at the maximum height it becomes zero. And then going downwards it's going to be like this. The magnitude is going to increase but the velocity is going to decrease. The magnitude is increasing, the speed is increasing, you see, but the velocity is decreasing because we have a negative uh, portion involved here. So you see here. So this is what a projectile is, in fact. You see that the speed is, if I talk about the speed, because in speed we're only talking about magnitudes, the speed is the lowest at this point, but it is not zero, right? It is not zero here, so if I, if I look here at the options, A cannot be the right answer because you see that uh, the speed is constant throughout. That is not the case. Neither can be B, nor can be D because we have a speed zero here. C is the correct answer because we have a certain portion of the horizontal velocity here. Let's say this is five meter per second, five, 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 and so on. 
And this one, let's say in the beginning, it's let's say 10, then it's uh, 7, then it's 4, and then 0, and 4, 7, 10. So you see that if you take their magnitudes, the speed is never ever zero. So C is the right answer. I hope this clears the concept of projectiles.